Okay, so today we're going to um, open in prayer and we'll go ahead and start. So let's pray. Uh, Father, right now we thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, we approach you in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that you'll speak through these lips of clay. I pray, Father, that you'll anoint me to speak forth your word. I pray that I'll reveal your mind. I pray I'll share your mind with your people. And I pray that they will be enlightened. I pray that you'll give me the tongue to learn, that I should speak a word in due season to those who are weary. And I pray, O oh God, that you'll empower me to um, speak forth your word, O oh God. I ask that the scales will be lifted off the eyes of those who are bound. I pray, Father, that you'll cause the anointing to come forth to destroy the yoke, O oh God, to let the anointing flow, O oh God, to destroy the yoke, to let the oppressed go free. In the name of the Lord Jesus, to undo every heavy burden. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for the prophetic anointing, and I yield, O oh God, to the teaching anointing, and I pray that the teaching anointing will come forth. And I thank you, O oh God, for revelation knowledge, and I pray, O oh God, that you'll um, stir the hearts of your people, O oh God, to meet the standard that you require of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So look, today, uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about, um, I can go a lot of different ways, but uh, it's something that's very, very important that we're going to talk about. Um, and if you saw the, the title, I entitled it um, Trans Transcendence. I, I entitled it Transcendence. We're talking about Transcendence today. Transcendence. And I was going to get up and do it like a Bible study and have the board and all that stuff, but um, I just decided against it. I think that would be interesting if it was more people here. But um, I may I may do that for you guys sometimes. Sometimes I I, I used to do the um, the board and I would go to certain stuff and just kind of flow with the board. But um, I'm not gonna do that now. So I'm talk about what transcend means. Then we're gonna flow. So listen, the word transcend it means to rise above. It means to go beyond. It means to overpass. It means to exceed. Transcend means to outdo or excel in excellence to elevation extent degree also it means to be above and independent of the universe it means to be transcendent or superior it means to excel that's what it means so transcendence has to do with rising above to be trans transcendent it means this if you're transcendent it means you go beyond ordinary limits it means you're, you're surpassing it means you're exceeding it means you're superior. It means you're supreme. All right? It means you're superior. It means you're supreme. So we're gonna, I'm going to speak on this from a certain point. I'm kind of just going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to just talk about this. Um, I think this will be very interesting to kind of dig into and to kind of flow. My head is down because I'm um, I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm looking at my phone. And I'm about to use the app on my phone. Um on my phone to just flow. Okay, so we're talking about transcendence. I'm, I'm about to flow in one second. I'm just trying to um, make sure this is the way I want to go. Just trying to follow the, the Holy Spirit. Um, he said, lying beyond the ordinary range of perception. Jesus, why would you do this to me now? Have mercy on me, God. Okay, so uh, I want to talk to you guys about something because a, a lot of believers are unaware Matter of fact, I feel that we'll go to First John. Go to First John. This is a lot of things. That, this this is what a lot of um, believers are unaware of, right? They're unaware of these things. First John chapter four. We're going to First John chapter four. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. We're going to start with verse one. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they have God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now, Already it is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And this is very deep because, you know, I'm going to pull some things out of this verse that a lot of people are not aware of. 
but the key verse we're going to read one more time um john 4 1 through 4 it says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are going in, out into the world hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesseth that jesus christ is coming in flesh is of god and every spirit that confesseth not that jesus christ is coming in flesh is not of god and this is that spirit of antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already it is in the world ye are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so verse 4 is going to be the the the, the um the the primary verse verse 4 the key verse ye are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you he that is in the world also listen to me um, when you go to the book of First John, it addresses three classes of believers. It talks about the little children, it talks about young men, and it talks about the fathers. You know, and all you you're literally you're either going to be you're going to be the um, you're going to be little children, you're going to be you know young men, or you're going to be fathers, and you know young men or young women, or you're going to be fathers or mothers. Here's the issue: the the way you can gauge your spiritual maturity is based on what you struggle with. And, you know, a lot of people that I meet, they're more so little children. You know, um, they're little children. Little children struggle with forgiveness. Little children struggle with wondering if God has forgiven them. And little it's a lot of little children struggle with discerning who's saved and who's not saved. There are a lot of believers right now. All you have to do is say that, you know, um, are you a Christian? Yeah. And they say, oh, she's a Christian. That, that's, that's childish. That's that you didn't test that you didn't you a Christian yeah, yeah. you a Christian yeah, I'm a Christian okay cool yeah she a Christian yeah okay yeah but little children it say little children let no man deceive you he that practices righteousness is righteous and he that love his brother it say he that does not practice righteousness and he he does not practice righteousness he does not love his brother he's not you know of, he's not righteous he's not a God he's not a child of God but little children have an issue with little children have an issue with um, discerning who's saved little children have an issue with knowing they're forgiven little children have an issue with overcoming so I'm speaking on the standpoint of tran tran um, transcendence but a synonym the word that's synonymous with transcendence has to do with overcoming I'm talking to you about overcoming today and the thing about that verse first John chapter 4 is say you're of God little children have overcome them because greater is he that Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. See, little children have a hard time overcoming. The thing about little children is that everything that they come up against, they have a tendency to want to quit. They want to give up. They get easily discouraged. They easily draw back. So we're purposing to be people that overcome. Because one thing I want you to be aware of is your salvation is tied up in your overcoming. There's one promise in the Bible. I mean, there's one promise in the Bible about eating from the tree of life. And Jesus cannot lie. And the Lord Jesus said that he who overcomes will I grant to eat from the tree of life. If you don't learn how to overcome, you will not eat from the tree of life. And if you don't eat from the tree of life, that means you are not granted entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Hey, no, I chill out with the noise. So you are not granted entrance in the kingdom of heaven. So you got to be aware of that because little children, their little children are not aware of how to overcome. And little children are always in circumstances, situations where it seems as if everything they're up against, it seems like everything that's going on, it seems as if they, they cannot overcome. It seems like, you know, everything they're up against is overwhelming. You know, th that kind of marks the sign. That kind of marks the sign of a, you know, that kind of marks the sign of a, um, of a child. They're easily emotional. They're easily overcome by stuff. You know, they find more reasons to fail rather than to rise above. They're quick to be offended. They're quick to, you know, misjudge things. They're quick to assume their presumptions. Like, they don't really know how to overcome. Um, do me a favor. Misha, grab my, uh, grab that, that Bible with the Greek and stuff in it. Because this is, um, my phone, I don't know what's going on. But grab the, um, the Bible, the Greek study Bible. Okay, the thing about it is that a lot of people, um, don't know how to overcome. So, I want to just stress this to you guys. And I'm, I'm going to teach you guys um, little principles about overcoming. It's the Bible that's facing you right there with the black ribbon in it. Just grab that. You said what? Cordell. 
Can you go get that Bible with the black ribbon facing us? It's right there. Is it like you can't miss it? Do you see that? It's a whole pile of stuff. It's right there. That just fell down. It was looking straight at her before she knocked it over. All right. So we're going to go to, um, let me look this word up for you guys. All right, 1 John, for those just tuning in, we're in 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, um, we're going to start with verse 4. It says, Ye are from God, little children, and have overcome them. They ain't in here. Jesus have mercy. Overcome him. Give me one more thing. Grab that Cordell. Well, not me. Grab that Vines Expository. It's, it'll be, a, it'll be a, a, um, a book that says Vines Expository. It's it's a, a, a um Jesus. It's a, a it's like brown. You know what I'm talking about? Cordell? It's like brownish. It's like a brown book. Yeah, I'm sorry y'all, but we got to continue this flow. I'm just trying to look this word up so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, and then I'm just gonna flow. So just bear with me, you guys. It most likely it will be by the strongest concordance. So I would I would think the strong concordance I think is on the side of this bookshelf, right at the bottom under all those books. You'll see the um. You should see it. You see it? It's gonna say Vines Expository. No, no, it's like literally a um. Look, Nisha. Dude, what is okay, you just give me that. I'll use that. Okay. If you don't have one of these, make sure you get one of these. But this is for those without technology. But if you have a technology, then you can. Uh, I have one downloaded on my uh, phone. You need one of these to be able to look up the contest or still find that vines because this ain't good enough. Um, look up words and etc. And this is old school. But if you have technology, make sure you download the Strong's app. You know, I suggest you guys to get what's called a Blue Letter Bible. There's it's something called Blue Letter Bible. It's an app you can download. You can touch a word and it tells you what it means in the Greek. Get you a blue letter Bible. It's free, a free app you can download and you know it'll help you in studying the Bible. Because you won't be worth your salt if you don't know how to dig. And the Bible said it's the glory of a man to to uh, glory of a man to uh if not, hey, it may be it may be in that um Yeah. Hey look, it, you gotta be worth your salt. You know, if you're gonna work your salt, you gotta learn to dig. You can't read the Bible just on the surface. If you if you only read the Bible on the surface, then you won't really go far. Because a lot of words you think that's what it meant because it said in English case in point, the Bible says, Let your conversation be as worthy of, of the gospel. The thing about the word conversation is in the Greek, the word conversation means conduct. So you got people preaching to you that don't study, and they say, Let your conversation be as worthy of the gospel. Only talk about stuff worthy of the gospel. That's that's you're in error, you're off because it really means let your lifestyle be representative representative a representation of the gospel that's what that means so it's a lot of things you begin to look things up and then also another thing as you mature more in the lord things that meant something to you then they'll mean more than you now like when i was young god used to say blessed are the pure heart for they'll see god and i used to always think man if i keep my heart pure i'll make it to heaven that's what my that was my interpretation but as i matured in the faith god began to reveal it more and now i understand that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall hear God. That word see means perceive, know, clearly understand, comprehend. So that means that if I keep my heart pure, I can hear God. The impurity, the stuff that I want, you don't know, you know have to keep looking for it. Let's look over here and see. If it's not over here, then oh well. So if I if I don't um if I don't keep appreciate it, man. If I don't keep my heart pure, I won't be able to discern the voice of God. How do I know that? Romans chapter 12, it says, Romans chapter 12 said, Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good, that perfect, acceptable of God. That word prove in the Greek means discern, know, approve of, and test. So a lot of us can never discern God's will for our lives because of the way we think. Well, the way we think disqualifies us from knowing the will of the Lord. So it's just little things like that. You know, I guess it was a Holy Ghost commercial to kind of show you guys some stuff. But I just really want to encourage your hearts because God has a lot for each everybody in the sound of my voice. But you got to know how to study. You cannot, you cannot not have, you cannot afford to not have tools, you know, because a lot of us have strongholds in our minds because we don't study, right? You got to, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Word man need not be ashamed, right? Divine the word of truth. That has nothing to do with preaching. 
at all. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved, where man need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It has nothing to do with preaching. That has to do with your life. You got to study the word in a way to be approved by God in the way you live. You you preach to live. I mean, no, 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 no. The old adage is, they used to say, practice what you preach. And then they changed it. Don't practice what you preach. Preach what you practice. Only talk about what you live. The power of any words you can give is if you live it. If you don't live it, you know, that's why some people right now, if, if you got five people in the room, five people on Periscope, and everybody tuned in to their, that, what they say. It's some people when they speak, it's such a weightiness to what they say. And it's like life-giving when they speak. Why? Because they're living what they're saying. A lot of people can go and read books and accumulate information and just tell you what they read and what they heard. But the power of your message is that you live it. So if you don't live it, then there's no power. The, the Bible says that Paul said, this work death in me so I can give life to you. It's things that I've died to. It's, it's a lot of death in my life. But the things that work death in me, it work life in others. You know, so it's a little principle you got to understand. And that's why, you know, very soon I'm going to start a ministerial school and talk about little basics of ministry, things I know. I'm not, you know, a sage or whatever, but I know some stuff that I've learned. So just speaking from what I know, things I testify, things I see, things I know, just kind of speak on stuff you got to know about ministry. Because, you know, that's another thing about ministry. You know, one thing about ministry is this, is that, you know, your your understanding of God determines your message to me. And everybody don't have the same message. The, your understanding of God determines your message to men, you know, so it's things you got to just understand, but you got to know how to carry yourself and but above all, you got to be in the word, you know, because there, there are levels of word, there are levels of word, there are levels of word. Is anybody interested to in hearing the levels of word? Would that intrigue anybody to know the levels of word? There are levels of word, levels of word, right? So we got Ahmad want to hear, Ch Choma want to hear. Who else want to hear about the levels of worry? There are levels of worry. Everybody does not have the same level of worry, right? All right, so think about it. The first level of worry is what you call the word of faith. The first level of worry is the word of faith. What's the, word of faith? the word of faith is for babes. It's for babes, right? The thing about babes is when you talk about the word of faith, you know most people So, faith. Also, the next word I was called the word. Hear the word sanctifies you. It sets you apart. Anybody under the word of truth is a sanctified lifestyle. So, you cannot be under the word of truth without living a sanctified lifestyle. The word of truth calls you to be set apart in how you live. But the highest level of word is called the word of righteousness. The word of righteousness helps you understand what's right to God and what pleases God. Anybody that's under the word of righteousness, they'll live a life that's pleasing unto God. But everybody, for me, my, my upbringing was different. I grew up under the word of righteousness. And then I had to go back and learn the word of faith because I grew up under Apostle Greer. So he only preached about, he's, his name in the spirit is Noah. God calls him Noah. That's his name in the spirit. And Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So if you're under Apostle Greer, he's going to let you know what's pleasing to the Lord or what's not pleasing. But when you just get born again, the ideal situation would be to be under the word of faith so you can learn the basics, to learn how to trust God, how to believe God, how to receive from God, what, you know, the basic stuff, the fundamentals of the faith, to build a strong foundation. But a lot of people, they never get a foundation. So because they don't get a foundation, they're not, you know, you're only going to be as strong as your foundation. What's the word of faith? The word of faith is going to teach you how to pray, teach you how to forgive, teach you how to love, teach you how to have hope, teach you how to believe God, teach you how to trust God, teach you how to walk with God, teach you how to treat people. You know, that's the basics. The word of truth is going to sanctify you. The Bible says that you're sanctified by truth. It says your word is truth. When you're under the word of truth, you're going to, it's going to be a clear difference between you and other people, not based on what you know, but the way you live. And when you're under the word of righteousness, your whole focus is you're going to be trying to live a life that's pleasing unto God. So when you're under the word, a lot of times when you're just under the word of faith, what happens is you're not trying to live a life that's pleasing to God. You just always believe in God for stuff, but you're not trying to please God the way you live. It's all about what you can receive from God, what you can obtain from God, but it's not about how you can please God with your lifestyle. So the word of righteousness will, will require you to live right before the Lord. And that that's very important in our day because righteousness delivers from death. Those who don't live right, 
you can die before your time. The Bible says righteousness delivers from death. Some people will not be with us long because of the way they live. So you really got to be mindful because righteousness is a standard. Sin is a reproach to any people. So those who live right, they, 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 they begin to develop a certain level of favor with the Lord. So it's a lot of things people don't teach. You know, I thank God for my upbringing. You know, one thing about Heart of God Ministries is Heart of God Ministries is designed to reach people on all levels of life because of my unique um my unique upbringing, I want to reach people that just get saved. I want to be related to those. I want to relate to people that's in the middle. And I want to relate to people that's advanced. Because um, the way the Lord kind of allowed me, my course has been different. I learned all the deep things first. And then I didn't understand the basic stuff. So I had to come down off all the deep stuff and humble myself and learn basic stuff. But I found out the more I learned the basic stuff, the greater it just elevated me. Because I understood the deep stuff, and I, I and I could I could see with people. And Apostle Greer said before, he said, "Man, it's stuff that you know that some people, you know, in their seventies and eighties don't know." And then also, you know, I got a word about being um, knowing God's ways, and I got prophesied to it some stuff that I'm gonna be able to do and know that some people they'll never know. They they don't even know certain stuff exists like this. And I thank God for that course, but that's part of the ministry to introduce people to deeper level of living and so like that. But anyway. So it's a different level. Like I said, the word of faith, the word of truth, the word of truth, like I said, sanctifies you, it sets you apart. The word of truth, it, 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 it reveals things that liberate you. When you're under the word of truth, the Bible says, you know, the truth is truth to make you free. Anytime you're under the word of truth, you're liberated from error, you're liberated from bondage, you're liberated from a lot of things, a lot of liberation, and a lot of sanctification. It sanctifies you. There will be a clear mark upon you. That you're different. That's that's what makes an apostolic Christian. An apostolic Christian, you can tell. So when somebody's apostolic, I'm not talking about an apostle, because all believers should be apostolic in some degree. So an apostolic Christian, you can tell. Those who sit under apostolic doctrine, you can tell. And I'm not talking about false apostles. I'm not talking about people that have been preaching 60 years and they ordained them as an apostle because they graduated to another level. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who literally. Is, a, is an apostolic voice in his generation. You can tell the difference of someone who sat under an apostle because of the apostolic doctrine. You, you, apostolic doctrine. You can tell the difference between somebody that 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 uh, you can tell you can tell the difference between somebody that sits under prophetic doctrine. I mean, anyway. So that was the Holy Ghost commercial. Okay, so we're looking at this word overcome because I'm talking about trend. I'm talking about transcendence. Trying to teach you how to transcend. How to transcend. Right. How to transcend a lot of and this is for, you know, a lot of us, we really don't know how to overcome a lot. We're easily thrown off course. Stuff easily gets to us. You know, we're quick to want to give up. I'm right about it. We're quick to want to give up. Am I right about it? So I'm going to show you some things that you need to know, because if you don't know these things, it can cost you your soul. One more time. I'm sure things you need to know. If you don't know these things, it cost you your soul. It will cost you your soul. I want you to, um, you know, just be aware. A lot of people are operating under the error that no matter what they do, you can't lose your salvation. I get it. You can't lose it because the gifts and the cause of God are irrevocable. The salvation is a gift. Absolutely. God will never take it away. But think about this. I want, I want to present it to you. Now, this is interesting because think about this. The gifts and the cause of God are irrevocable, right? They can never be taken away. Anything God gives, they're irrevocable. It's yours. But tell me this. What's the difference between... A gift being taken away and me forfeiting something. What's the difference? Right? If I think about this, if I give you a hundred dollars in your hand, I say it's yours, and I never take it back. I give it to you. Boom, it's yours. Hundred dollars. And you forfeit the hundred dollars and you voluntarily give it up. How did I take it away? Right? And that's what happens with people. They're taught no matter what I do, I'm always saved. Nah, baby, look, you can forfeit your inheritance by the way you live. You can forfeit. You can yield it up. You can renounce this, depart from the faith. You can apostatize. When you apostatize, that means you fall away. That means you make a choice. I don't want a part in this. I don't want an inheritance. Hey, you can have this back. And you turn your back on the Lord. And that's what people do. And when they do that, they depart from the faith, right? Now, watch this. So, um, and I'm, I'm, like I said, today is going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people. It's going to be an eye-opener because a lot of things we don't know, but where we are in times, you got to know. And I'm, I'm going to be talking about some stuff that you got to know. And I'm telling you, like, you're going to see me. You guys have never seen me function of warning and stuff. You know, I, I used to, you know, I was known for warning and things like that. But it's time for me to sound this trumpet because there's so many people living a less quality life than God intended. 
And, you know, it grieves the God's heart that we're not pressing toward the mark of the prize that I call. It grieves God's heart that we're not passionate. And it grieves God's heart that we feel as if we can live any kind of way and represent him. So I'm really, really going to begin to sound the alarm, you know, because this is one of the words I got. Um, and um, no, they weren't here. I was going to say they were here. But I, I was at this prophetic conference. This prophet came all the way from Ireland. His name is um, Brendan McCauley. You can look him up. He's a, a beast. Came from out. Never seen a day in my life. The dude was like, I need to come. I came. And he began to prophesy to people. He called me out. And I can tell somebody about the prophesy to me. Because I can, I can begin to, as soon as somebody prophesy to me, sometimes I can feel the spirit of prophecy fall on me. And God will let me know that's him. And I, I felt God's presence when he stood by me. And sometimes prophets know this. When I, I could feel that it was something that God would communicate. So he said, he called me out and he stood over me and he said, young man, he said, the Lord says it's an urgency on your life to get people ready. He said, God says there's an urgency on your life. He said, God says you're going to have to run through the camp and get people ready. And he said, God says it's not about having the words to say. He said, but God says as you run, I'm going to give you the words to say. And he said, God says you are an envoy and there's an urgency on your life to run through the camp and get people ready. So I began to look, I began to study and research and things like that. And I realized it's something about me. If you connect to me, you're going to be pushed, right? Because it's an urgency on my life to get people ready for what God has called them to do. And not only that, it's an urgency on my life to prepare people for the coming of the Lord. Because a lot of people here, you got to realize this. He's only coming back for a bride without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. And a lot of us were very, very deceived as it relates to the coming of the Lord. And we feel as if when the Lord comes, he's going to open and receive us no matter how we live. But baby, that's a deception because the Bible says he's coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. And don't be deceived because there is a harlot that is that is, is a harlot that portrays herself as a bride. you got to desire. There's a thin line between the harlot and the bride. See, the, there's a false church that exists. And you got to be very, very discerning to the are in this false church. There's a church that's that's playing a harlot. See, the thing about us being the body of Christ, the Bible says that we are betrothed to the body. We're betrothed to Jesus. Here's this thing about a, a betrothal. When you look at the word betrothal in those times, a betrothal means this. It means that I, I'm going to marry you on a condition, right? I'm going to marry you on a condition. So in this stage right now, we're not married, right? He's coming to marry us when he comes. But right now, we've been betrothed to Christ. We're betrothed to him. Which means it's conditional. And he's only going to marry those who meet the condition. And a lot of us, the way we live, we're living far less than what... See, let me tell you something. And I, and I know some of you, if I'm saying this to you, some of you, the fear of God is going to fall upon you. The spirit of the fear of the Lord is going to visit you because a lot of people do simply do not fear God. And we really we really think that no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter what I live, God approves of me. That is a lie. That is a lie because the Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And the Bible says you should make it your aim, whether in the body or in the spirit, that you should be well pleasing to the Lord. Because the Bible says we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of ourselves to the Lord for everything I've done in the body, whether good or bad. And that's a lost teaching in the body of Christ. See, a lot of people don't teach about standing before the judgment seat of Christ. They don't teach about that. They don't tell you that when you stand before the Lord, you must give an account of everything you've done in your body. They don't tell you that you're going to be judged according to your revelation of the Lord. They don't tell you that the Lord is going to look at what you knew about him with the understanding you had, the information you were exposed to, and he's going to judge you based on did you reach your potential and did you fulfill what he called you to feel? How do I know this? The Bible says that there were three men. He gave one five, one two, and one one. And the Bible says he gave them talents according to their ability. And the Bible says that the one that he gave five, they increased. The one he gave two, they increased. And the Bible talks about a man that hid his talent he didn't lose, he hid his talent, did not produce, did not capitalize, did not maximize his time, did not prepare himself to do the will of God, did not do the will of God for his life. And the Bible says that he hid his talent and gave it back unto the Lord. And the Bible says when the Lord saw that talent, he said, you wicked and you unprofitable servant. He said, go into the outer darkness, prepare for the hypocrite and the unbeliever. And there's a lot of believers who are not maximizing their time. They're not maximizing their potential. They're not maximizing their efforts. They're not trying to be everything God called them to be. And they feel as if they're going to stand before the Lord without giving their full effort, their full heart to this, and everything will be okay. That's a deception. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, there shall he reap. I'm right about it. So, I'm, I'm, like I said, it's going to be eye-opening for you when I get into this thing about overcoming. Because 
it's going to be very interesting to see. It's very interesting now because some of you guys, the fear of God, um, it's too many people that live without the fear of God. And that's why they don't depart from evil. The Bible says by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. But it says by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Anybody that does not depart from evil, they don't fear God. If you can stay in evil, you don't fear God. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding. You can never be wise without fearing God. And that, that see, that, that's the scary thing about worldly wisdom. A lot of people think they're wise. Dude, you are a fool if you don't fear God. Because the fool says in his heart, there is no God. He does not see. That's a fool. A fool lives without the consciousness that God is watching everything. A fool lives like that. A fool is not aware that God's eyes are everywhere, keeping watch on the good and the evil. Be aware of that. So we're talking about, you know, overcoming, right? I want you guys to see. Watch this. So the Bible says that you are of God, little children. And it says you have overcome him. It says you overcome them. Watch. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this overcoming, right? I'm going to look. I'm gonna use it for one second. And then we're going to just flow. 3528. Um, 3528 in the Greek. Let's see what this means. Look at the word over. And I'm going to flow because I want young, I want babes in Christ to know they got the potential to overcome. But I want to show you what happens. And I'm going to show you the conditions of overcoming that a lot of people don't know. But you, the, uh, you'll see. Let's we'll say 35, I thought you said 3528. Okay, let's see. The word, this word means this. It's. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Nikio. I, I think that's Nike. Nikio. It means to subdue. It means to conquer. It means to overcome. It means to prevail. Get the victory. So watch this. So you overcome. You prevail. You conquer. You get the victory. Watch this. You are of God, little children. You are of God, little children. And you've overcome them. You overcome them. You, you triumph over them. You prevail over them. You have victory over them. Why? Here's the thing now. Because. See, anytime you see because, it's giving you the reason. Because it's giving you the reason for something. Because. It, anytime you see because, it's telling you why. So, you are of. Listen to this. It said, you are of God, little children. I want you guys to understand that you are of God. You're, you're God's chosen. God has a calling in your life. God wants to use you in these last days, in these evil times. Last, last days and end times, right? He wants to use you. And you are of God little children and watch this you've overcome them what have you overcome you overcome false prophets you overcome demonic spirits you overcome the spirit of antichrist why because not on your own ability but watch this you overcome because what because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world see let me tell you this the only way you're going to learn to overcome the only way you're going to start to transcend crises only going to start to transcend circumstances you got to get this you got to live with the revelation that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Listen to me. That's the great revelation of the New Testament, Christ in you, the hope of glory. A lot of us have never even heard that saying. A lot of us don't even know that. Have you ever heard of Christ in you, the hope of glory? No. You ever heard that before, Cordell? Have you, anybody here ever heard that, Christ in you, the hope of glory? A lot of people don't even know that exists. That is the great mystery of the New Testament. Paul said it himself in Ephesians 3. He said, this is the great, do you guys understand it? You understand it, Shay? He called it, Paul, he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I, I want to expound on that. Do you guys understand it? I see Tony heard it. I see Shay heard it. I see Savinia, uh, Savin you heard it. Any, do you understand it? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Think about this. Think about this. This is, a great, this is one of the greatest revelations in the New Testament. You have Christ in you. The hope of glory. Watch this. The greatest mystery of the New Testament. Well, the Bible says great is the mystery of God in his right. It said God was manifested in the flesh, seen among men, justified in the spirit. You know, preached among men, justified in the spirit, seen by angels. It's one like that. I think I may, I may be a couple little things off. But here's the thing. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Watch this. Jesus actually comes to indwell you. And your, your expectation of glorious outcomes, your expectations of glorious circumstances, your expectations of God being revealed in you and to you, your expectation of the manifest presence of God is all because Christ lives in you. 
Christ comes to indwell you and he's your confident expectation of glory. So the reason I can be confident that God's going to be good to me, the reason I can be confident that this won't overwhelm me, the reason I can be confident that I have victory is because Christ is in me, the hope of glory. See, Christ indwells me and Christ makes me superior to anything I can go through. Christ makes me superior to anything I can come up against. Christ made me superior to all my enemies. There's nothing that's greater than him. And I've overcome. I can succeed. I can conquer. I can get the victory because greater is he that is in me. Greater is Jesus Christ indwelling me. Greater is Jesus Christ living inside of me than he that's in the world. See, think about this. All that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the prince of the power of the air. So Satan is in the world. But just because Jesus is in me, I've already overcome. So let me tell you this thing about overcome. This thing overcome, um, you already have overcome because of your faith. The Bible says this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Just because you have faith in Jesus, you already have overcome the world. You already are superior than the world. You already have victory over the world. You already prevail against the world. You already have power over the world. Just because Christ is in you. Think about this. When you think about the world, that word world means cosmos. Cosmos has to do with a system. So that word world has to do with this. You've overcome that demonic system that rules and fallen man. You already are above those things. Now you have to go through the school of the spirit and you have to renew your mind. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to educate you and to equip you. You have to learn to think the way God thinks. You have to learn how to tap into the mind of Christ. You have to learn how to stretch the way you think. And you have to learn to not think like the world. Yet the greatest thing that's hindering you from being victorious is the way you think. Because the way you think determines how you live. And that's, that's the law of the spirit. You live in the spirit by your thoughts. You live in the spirit by your thoughts. To get in the spirit, it takes my thoughts. I live in the spirit by what I think about. So the thing about it is a lot of us, we think a lot less than who we are. And because we think so low, we begin, we begin to experience an inferior quality of life than what God intended. But greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. See, the devil it goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may, not can, who he will is at whom he may. Satan looks for opportunity. And the greatest opportunity you give the devil is your lack of knowledge. The Bible said that God's people are destroyed because lack of knowledge. See, a lot of us don't even know ourselves. And I'm not talking about studying yourself. I'm not talking about writing a book about yourself. I'm saying we don't know who God says we are. See, a lot of us, we empower the devil in our lives because we're deceived about who God says we are. And we're so quick to believe who God, who the devil says we are. See, there was a time like at work. I was at work today. And things were going across my mind. And sometimes, you know, I'm not always on it. And things were going across my mind. And I wasn't really affected by it or et cetera. I, I was just letting it linger. And finally, you know, the devil just kept perpetrating and kept saying certain things. And look, I said, hold on. I, like, I was walking in the back. And I said, look. I said, I said, devil, you a lie. I said, man, that's not who I am. But I addressed him because I know who I am. And you got to be, there are times where the devil puts stuff in your mind. The devil, you know. He, he just speaks to you, uh, endless conversation, and you think, why am I thinking about this, bro? And I say, hey, look, man, look, let me tell you something. You a liar. That's not who I am. I refuse to believe that. And and, and, and there's times where I'll be at work and, and certain things, they will put f little false things in my mind and et cetera. And I tell them, look, man, that's, I said, you are a liar. That'll never happen to me. It's times where I can tell you some stuff the devil has has put in my mind, trying to make me think about this. And I say, look, man, that will never happen to me. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. But I've already overcome him. But little children, they don't know they have. A, they don't know they already overcome just because of Jesus. Just because you have Jesus, you already positionally have the victory. You already positionally have overcome. But now you gotta walk this thing out. It's not just knowing that it's not just knowing that you've overcome. You gotta walk it out. You gotta demonstrate that you know you're more than a conqueror because he loves you. See, the thing about being more than a conqueror, we are quick to say that I'm more than a conqueror. Well, you're not more than a conqueror if you don't know he loves you. Because love empowers you. And love causes you to understand you never can fail. Because it's saying all these things. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. I'm not a conqueror by myself. I'm not a conqueror because I know the Bible. I'm not a conqueror because I'm a prophet. I'm not a conqueror because of the church I attend. I'm a conqueror, nay, in all these things, 
We are, and I'm not just a conqueror, I'm more than a conqueror. And I use an example, you know, I heard an example all the time about a boxer who was in a match in a world heavyweight fight. And, you know, he went he went 16 rounds and, you know, he got beat up real bad and et cetera. But he won the, he won the match. And he won the match. He got a million dollar purse. He got a million dollar prize for it. He comes home. And when he comes home, when he walks in the house, he hands the check to his wife. And they say, you know, the boxer is a conqueror. But his wife is more than a conqueror because she didn't have to fight to receive that. So we're more than conquerors. Jesus has, Jesus, the battle is not ours as Lord's. Jesus has already, he's won a lot of things for us. And we're really just experiencing the benefits of it, right? And a lot of us, if you if you if you don't read your Bible, you're gonna be deceived. You're gonna be trying to earn stuff Jesus has already given you, right? Use the example of a cup. You know, my phone, my phone. Look at this phone. This is our phone. This this phone is crying out. Say, Lord, I want to be a phone. Lord, I want to be a phone. Lord, I want to be a phone. Lord, make me a phone. Lord, make me a phone. Lord, I just want to be able to talk. I just want to be able to call. Lord, make me a phone. And that's how a lot of Christians are. They don't know who they are, and they're asking God for stuff He's already given them. That's why knowledge is so empowering. That's why I love to learn. That's why every day of my life is evolving because I'm always reaching out for something I don't know, and I'm always trying to I'm trying to strengthen my foundation because the more I know who I am, the greater life I can live. And a lot of us are not aware of that. So you got to be mindful of these things because you are of God, little children, and you've overcome them because because there's a reason for this because. Greater is he that is inside of you than he that is in the world. Just because Jesus indwells you, just because Jesus is inside of you, you have the potential to overcome. But you have to walk this potential out. And I want to talk to you about how do, how do I walk out this potential? It's not just good enough to know that I've overcome positionally. Because there's a lot of people, they live positionally, positionally. We call that positional truth. Think about this. The Bible says in Hebrew in Ephesians 1, Three, it says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing and how every, he blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That's good. That's positionally. Positionally, I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings and with all, with all, you know, positionally, I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's positionally. But how's that experientially? How does that work out in life? It's not just good to, you know, knowledge is supposed to lead to experience. You're not just supposed to know stuff. What's the experience of it? Because you never know truth without experience. See, a lot of us can quote scriptures, but the power of scripture is when you, you experience it. The power of scripture is when you live it. The scriptures empower you. They sanctify you. And you won't be sanctified until you live it. See, let me tell you about sanctification. Sanctification is a process, right? Sanctification is a process. And not only sanctification, a process, sanctification means this. It means to be set apart for use, right? And until you begin to get in the word, you'll never be sanctified, right? Because when you're sanctified, sinners know it. And when you're sanctified, you're set apart from them. And when you're set apart from them, it means that you be, there's a clear mind of demarcation. There's a lot of demarcation drawn between the unclean and the clean, the holy and profane. But a lot of us, we don't spend time in the word, so we're not sanctified, right? We're just like the world. Anytime you're living an unclean life, you're not sanctified. Because sanctification and unclean is the opposite, right? Because the Bible actually says this. It says, in a great house, they're not just vessels of gold, silver, and etc. He said, but they're vessels, vessels of honor and dishonor. Everybody that's being used by the Lord is not a vessel of honor. See, think about it. If some people are used by the Lord conveniently, right? What I mean by that? It means that they're it means that they they won't be chosen for higher things. They can be chosen for those manual tasks, you know, to tell a sinner God loves them, you know, to etc. But they don't qualify for higher things because they're not a vessel of honor. See, the higher stages require character, right? And a lot of us won't qualify for higher things because of undeveloped character. And you know, like I said, just to be used by the Lord, that is not, you know. See, let me tell you something. The low, one of the lowest levels you can you can be on, and this will be offensive to you if you're religious. One of the lowest levels you can be on is to just want to be used by God. That's low. I'm going to say that one more time. One of the lowest levels you can be on is to want to be used by God. That's low. Because God will use anybody. God uses sinners. God uses dogs. I mean, donkeys. God uses rocks if they let them. God, God will use, you know, uh, he'll, he, he, he'll use anything that's available. But it's not about being used. The highest level, the highest level you can live on is to want to reflect like to look like God because think about this 
every, God will use anything, but everything don't look like him, right? Everything does not remind you of God by the way they handle themselves. Everybody does not remind you of God by the way they talk. Everybody does not bear the character traits of Jesus in their life. The lowest level is to just want to be used. But the highest level is to want to reveal God. The highest level is to want to look like God, to resemble him. The Bible says, little children, imitate God. It says, imitate God as a father imitates a child. It says, little children, imitate your father. We want, you want to get to the place where you look like God. You imitate him and you perfect righteousness. That's the, those are the high levels. Those are the things you don't hear people talk about. Those are the things you just got saved yesterday and you want to learn how to prophesy, but you have not learned how to perfect righteousness. I've been there. And I recognize that what's the point of me prophesying and I don't have character? What's the point of me prophesying and I have not learned how to live right? Nothing's wrong with you if you prophesy, but you need to get to a place where you're trying to perfect righteousness, right? And when you get to that place, you become what the Bible calls a perfect man. Mark the perfect man and observe him the way that man is peace. But everybody has the potential to overcome. And I want to show you some things about overcoming. We're going to go through some places, right? You guys following me so far? Who we got on here? You following me so far? Y'all yeah, following me, Cordell and Misha? It's opening your eyes and stuff. Watch this. Y'all follow me? Jesus. Hold on, let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I come before you, O oh God. And Father, right now, I join rank with these brothers and sisters in Christ, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, you said in your word, or two or more with a touch and a grief, anything on earth, it shall be done in heaven. So, Father, right now, by the spirit of the living God, I saw 9-11. And I'm praying right now for my, my mother, my sisters. I'm praying for my friends. I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for those connected with me on Periscope. God of heaven, I'm praying for Misha Cordell, their, their extended family. And right now, I come against every demonic assignment against the family. I come against every demonic assignment against the health. I come against everything the enemy is planning and working on this hour. I cancel it right now in Jesus' name. Devil, I command you to lose God's people in Jesus' name. I said, devil, I command you to lose God's people in their mind and their heart. And God of heaven, I'm praying right now, your word says a warning comes before destruction. So I'm praying right now, you'll preserve, you'll cover. I, I'm praying that you'll cover us with the covenant blood of Jesus. And I'm praying, Father, that you allow, I declare right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I declare right now that I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out, the head and not the tail, above and never beneath. I declare right now, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the living God lift up a set against him. I declare right now, by the spirit of the living God, that I declare that we have authority and power of all service and all scripture of all power to enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. I declare right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that I put we put on the full armor of God and I thank you above all. We take out the word of the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. I thank you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father I'm praying you release those heavenly emissaries. Oh God I'm praying you release oh God those ancient war angels that go before us. Oh God that you'll cut off that you'll cut off every demonic cord at work. Oh Father release those heavenly emissaries right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Father I'm I'm praying you release those angels by the spirit of the living God. And I'm praying they'll go before us, that they'll hedge, they'll cover, they'll protect. Oh God, I'm praying against premature death. I'm believing by the spirit of the living God. Whatever murderous plot is being plotted right now in my city, I come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare right now that no blood shall be shed tonight. Father, I'm believing on a quicken. Oh God, you're going to reveal. I'm asking by the spirit of the living God, you'll pour out your spirit in my city. Oh God, I'm praying by the spirit of the living God, you'll make yourself known in my city. I'm praying by the Spirit of living God, the gospel of the kingdom be preached in my city. I lift up my voice by the Spirit of living God, and I'm praying you'll make yourself known. Oh God, you're going to cover, make us sensitive to your voice. I'm praying, Father, we won't be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm believing, oh God, for those that are planning, oh God, murders, plots, treacherous schemes. I'm praying that you allow nothing to prevail against us. I thank you that because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Oh God, no evil shall befall us. Any plague come to our dwelling. Oh God, but you'll cause you. You said, oh God, that he does the secret place of the Most High. No evil shall befall us. Plague come to our dwelling. Oh God, but you said you'll give your you said that you'll give your angels charge over him in all his ways. You won't dash your foot against a stone. Oh God, you said, oh God, it'll come near my side, it'll come near me, but it won't touch me. I'll look in my eyes and I'll see the, the reward of the wicked. So I lift up my voice. You said, because he loves me. You said, because he loves me, I'll deliver him. Oh God, you said, because he calls upon my name, I'll set him on high. Oh God, you said I'll satisfy you with long life and I'll show you my salvation. So I lift
lift up my voice, O God of heaven. And I'm believing, O God, show us long life. And I'm believing, show us your salvation. Move by your spirit. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. I said, in Jesus' awesome name we pray. By the spirit of the living God, go forth. Manifest yourself. Cover us. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen. Jesus, can you give me paper towels? Alright, so we're still talking about um, transcendence, right? Jesus. Okay, so let me say, like I said, this is going to open your eyes about some things about overcoming, because transcendence is just a word for overcoming, right? Um, we're going to go to John chapter 16. Um, John chapter 16, we're going to start with verse 31. It says, Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Key verse 33. Excuse me. It says, these things I have spoken unto you, and that in me you might have peace. Think about this. You'll never have peace apart from Jesus. You know, it's the old saying they say, no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, K-N-O-W, K-N-O-W, peace. So, no Jesus, no peace. But if you know Jesus, you'll know peace, right? So, it says that these things, everything that God speaks to you is so you'll have peace, right? You got to be aware of that. That's one of the signs it was God. If it brought confusion, you know, sometimes it brings, it will seem like it brings confusion because you have a stronghold. But if God speaks, it's going to bring peace, right? And peace is not the absence of conflict, right? It's the absence of no, it's the absence of no um, chaos within you. When you have peace, that means you don't allow trouble on the outside to get inside you. Jesus had peace. Jesus had peace when he was in the middle of a, a tsunami. When the Bible says it was a storm in the Greek, it's a tsunami. So it was a tsunami on the ocean and Jesus was sleeping. So that does not mean everything around you is going to be okay. A lot of us feel like we're going to have peace when every, everything got to work out on the outside. No, it can be hell on the outside and you be joyous and have peace on the inside. So in the only place you can have that, you got to have a certain level of relationship with Jesus to experience that. Watch this. It says in the world, you're going to have tribulation. So listen to me. If you don't want trouble, die. That's the only way. If you, you want you want trouble, die. But if you're going to be alive, part of being in the world is you're going to have tribulation. That word tribulation means you're going to have pressures. You're going to have hardships. You're going to have afflictions. You're going, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord lives them out of them all. So just being, just being in the flesh, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have tribulation. So there's no way around it. So if you're going to have tribulation, you got to learn how to have tribulation well because Jesus can't lie. So a lot of us have not mastered the art of tribulation. We not mastered the art of resiliency. We have not mastered the art of overcoming. And what happens, as soon as we get a little, you know, you could, oh man, I woke up this morning, I prayed, oh, it's going to be a good day. Oh, I just prayed this morning, it's going to be a good day. You get the work and all the work left for you and you already out of it. That's a little tribulation. You telling me that God is so weak that you can't overcome a little bit extra at work? Are you serious? That's the God we serve. And, and this is amazing because this is a testimony that we give to unbelievers. We say that the God we serve it's so weak and powerless that you can't overcome anything. And, and, and that's, that's hypocrisy because Jesus said that, he said, these things I've spoken to you that you may have peace. And he said, look, this is what Jesus said. And here's the thing about it. A lot of us never caught revelation. We actually are the body of Christ, which means he's the head, the Holy Spirit is the mind, and we're the body. So if Jesus said he's, um, he's overcome the world, you have too. You just haven't learned to walk in it. But in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But Jesus said, look, but be of good cheer. 
You got to learn how to maintain a good attitude when stuff going bad. If everything, if stuff going on always affects you, then you're immature. You got to learn how to keep good cheer in the midst of affliction. You got to learn how to keep good cheer in the midst of adversity. You got to learn how to maintain a good attitude, a joyous mindset in the midst of stuff going wrong. Listen to me. I, I wish I can get on here and say everything going to be okay. And, you know, nothing going to happen to you for a year. But that's a lie. You're going to have a tribulation. So here's the issue. If, it's gonna if you're going to have a tribulation, you need to learn how to master your reactions. You need to learn how to master maintaining the proper attitude. You need to learn how to master keeping your joy. You need to learn how to master overcoming and being resilient when stuff happens. And you're going to have a lot of times to practice because you're going to be alive, right? So if you're going to be alive, you're going to have tribulation, right? He said, but be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. I, the reason I can have good cheer because I know that anything I'm up against, I can overcome. Anything I'm up against, I can have the victory. Anything I'm up against, I'm superior to. Anything I'm up against, I can prevail in. There's nothing I can be up against I can't prevail in. There's nothing I can be up against that I can't overcome. Nothing I can be up against I cannot subdue. I cannot bring under my feet. It's nothing. But you got to have that revelation, right? You got to have a revelation. Okay, let me show you some more stuff about overcoming. We're going to go to... Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, Romans chapter 12. Now, this is a deep one. This is a deep one. I, and I love this verse because a lot of us, you know, we don't know how to deal with this. This is so deep to me. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Favorite verses in the Bible. Um, who we got on here? Let's see what we got on here. I know it's going to mean something to you. Um, it's going to mean something to you, Jeremy. It's going to mean something to you, dude. We got Elisa, we got Ernest, we got Sabine, we got Shay, Shana. Okay, cool. Because this is supposed to be your assignment anyway, right? So it's supposed to mean something to you. It's supposed to be your assignment. Choma. Um, okay, cool, 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 cool. So watch this. Verse 19. It said, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. It said, But rather give place unto wrath, right? For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I'll repay, right? Saith the Lord. It said, therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. It said, if he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Watch this, verse 21, key verse. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. This is deep. See, a lot of us, I'm going to break it down. Verse 19, dearly beloved. So look, you're, you got to understand this. You're dearly beloved. You are loved by God. That word dearly beloved, that means you're, you're loved by God. You're the apple of God's eye. Watch this. It says, avenge not yourselves. We got to learn to stop taking matters into our own hands. We're so quick to take matters in our own hands. We're so quick to defend ourselves. We're so quick to take matters in our own hands. We're so quick to, you know, defend, you know, um, social issues. We're so quick to do certain things. Unless God, if God ain't calling you to do that, kill it. But it says, avenge not yourselves. Watch this. It says, but rather give place unto wrath. See, you got to learn how to give God opportunity to work. A lot of times when people do us wrong, we don't give God opportunity. We don't give God place. We take matters into our own hands. We got to speak up. We got to defend ourselves. We got to say, I ain't no pushover. I'm not no doormat, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of times we don't give place to rap. Now, there is a time to speak. I'm not saying every, there are times where God will get you to say something. So don't be passive. You got to find a difference between passivity and aggressiveness. To be passive has to do with, you know, sin. Anybody that's passive will, will live in sin. Because passivity is to know to do good and not do it. Anytime you're being passive, that means you know to do good and don't do it. To him that knows to do good and does not do it, to him is sin. Anything you know to do that's good and you refuse to do, you sinned. And that's passive. Being aggressive is you being hurt. So you're going, you refuse to allow people to do certain things to you. And you go over the top to the extreme to protect yourself. And you misrepresent God and you get out of character. That's what you call you know, uh, being aggressive. But to be assertive is to know the time to speak up and be initiated and inspired by God, not the flesh, not how you feel, but you're inspired by God and you speak you, your words are seasoned with salt and you speak a word in due season. That's assertiveness. Watch this. It says, um, vengeance is mine. Absolutely, you do. That's the, yeah. Vengeance is mine. I'll repay, said the Lord. Watch this. So vengeance is God's. God is God's and it's God's prerogative to give vengeance. It's God's. That's that's his job. He's gonna vent, he's gonna avenge you. So you gotta let God give vengeance. Vengeance is his. I repay, saith the Lord. Watch this. Therefore, if thine enemy is hungry, feed him. Watch this. So if somebody's your enemy, 
You got to go out your way to, you got to love your enemies. The Bible says, love your enemies. Watch this. It says, um, chapter 12, verse 20, therefore thy enemy hunger, it says, feed him. It says, if he thirsts, give him a drink. Watch this. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So I overcome what a person does to me by walking in love. If I walk in love, what happens is when, when you walk in love towards your enemies, God convicts them because you're blameless. It will be no reason for them not to. It will be no reason for them to treat you the way they're treating you. And by you walking in love towards them, it's simple, it's simple as a walking in love, Shay. If you walk in love towards them, you will convict them. The Holy Spirit will convict them because he's going to deal with their hearts about they're being able to see you, about them doing that to you with no reason. One of the ways you can tell that is Judas. The Bible says when Judas um, betrayed Jesus, he was he was overtaken with guilt, and he went and tried to make it right, and you know tried to get the money back, and killed himself. So by by you know what he did against Jesus hit him, and there's always a breaking point. It, it can look like that person not gonna break, and look like that person not gonna do this. But if you keep walking in love, love never fails, and they'll hit a breaking point, and God will convict them. And, or vendors will just fall. Now watch this. Um, if they don't repent. Uh, verse 21. This is the key verse. It says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. See, a lot of us, we're very overcome by evil. Every time something evil happens, we let it overcome us. When something evil happens, it's going to conquer against us. It's going to prevail against us. It's going to subdue us, make us a slave. It's going to uh, conquer us. It's going to beat us down. It's going to triumph over us. That's not the will of God. The will of God is that when evil happens to you, you don't allow evil to conquer, you don't allow evil to prevail, you don't allow evil to be victorious, but you fight evil with good. The opposite, good always overcomes evil. Anytime somebody is being evil towards you, you got to be good toward them. Because if you, if you are good toward those who are evil, then you won't be overcome by evil. A lot of us are overcome by evil because we won't do good. So when evil things happen, we just let it overcome us. But we don't do good to combat evil because light always overpowers darkness. The Bible says that light overpowers darkness and darkness knoweth not, you know, knoweth not. So light always overpowers darkness and you're a child of light and the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness and truth. So one of the ways you develop the fruit of the spirit is by doing good when people do evil to you. Because the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So when I do what's good, if I do good to you and you're evil toward me, I develop the fruit of the Spirit. What's the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Jesus manifested in you. When you walk, when you develop the fruit of the Spirit, it means you look like Jesus. You're reflecting Jesus and how you responded, how you acted, how you talked, and how you thought. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Watch this. But a lot of us, we get overcome by evil, but we don't overcome evil with good. So you have to learn how to overcome evil with good, right? Watch this. Um, let me show you another thing. Let's go to Second Timothy. I mean, Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. This is one of those admonitions about how. This is one of those admonitions. Admonitions about how a lot of people, you know, um, say certain things, you know, about, you can't, you know, you, one saved, always saved and stuff. That's not true. There's no, no, there's no such thing as one saved, always saved. Because God never takes away my will. So, if I'm one saved, always saved, why are there warnings of, you know, the Bible is written to believers. Why, why are you telling believers about hell? Why are you telling believers about, you'll see. Watch this. Alright, 2 Peter chapter 2. Watch this. 2 Peter chapter 2. We're going to start with verse 19. Watch this. Now, this is scary. It's going to be an eye-opener for a lot of you. A lot of you guys are going to repent just by reading this verse. <laughs> Woo! It's going to, watch this. Jesus is scary. All right, watch this. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the saints brought into bondage. And look at the principle. Anything that you're overcome by will put you in bondage. That's the principle. If something overcomes you, it will enslave you. Some people are overcome by masturbation. They are slaves to masturbation. Some people are overcome by offenses. They are slaves to offenses. Some people are overcome by unforgiveness. They are slaves to unforgiveness. Some people are overcome by hatred. They are slaves to hatred. Anything that overcomes you, that word overcome means prevails, victorious, etc. Anything that overcomes and subdues you, it gets you to forget who you are and to lure yourself 
you are going to be brought into abundance. Watch this. Now, this is scary. This is why I want you to see verse 20. This is the warning. Look at this. For if after, now this is about Christians. This is Christians. Now, watch this. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Watch this. If you have escaped, if you've been clean, if you got saved and you heard the truth through what Jesus has done, they say, watch this. If you are entangled again and overcome, watch this, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Watch this. For it, have been, it, have been, it would have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after it had been known to it to turn from the holy command delivered unto them. This is, this is Christians, not, not unbelievers, just Christians. There are people who were saved, right? They were saved. And they left the faith. And they got back into the world, watch this, and they were overcome by stuff again. I'm not talking about backsliders. That's the difference. I'm not talking about backsliders. But I'm talking about people that renounce the faith. Because God can be married to the backslider. They're, they're exceptions to the rule. But I'm talking about, you know, um, people that turn from the way of righteousness. Turn from it, you know. Well, no, no, no. We, we can use that. It's exceptions. Some people are backslidden because they don't know knowledge. Some people are backslidden because they turn it back on the Lord. So um, it's, it's, it's different. Some people are backslidden because they just, they, they held on, you know, to be backslidden. Um, some, some of us are backslidden and don't even know it. You know, to be honest, I could say in a way that I backslide. Let me tell you how. Because, you know, let me tell you how I know I backslidden. Listen to me. To be backslidden means this. It means that God has revealed to you a certain level of truth that you did not hold on to. And you did not hold on to it and fully progress. And you've fallen back from a truth you once held. So if, if God exposed you to a higher truth and you're not walking to that anymore, you backslidden. But I'm preaching, I'm ministering, I'm walking upright and etc. So I'm, I backslidden in a sense. But at the same time, if I get back to that truth, it won't be like I backslid. So you, you can backslide from principles that God revealed to you by not regarding it as sacred or allowing people to convince you of other things or allowing people to influence you to come down off stuff. You can backslide. So I can say in a sense a, 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 a certain thing I backslid off of and God deals with me about it. And I, he's dealing with me about coming back. For example, um, what's an example of how you can backslide? Shoot, uh, yeah, I mean, you can tithe, you can, yeah, you can backslide from tithing. You can backslide from going to church. One, one day, you always, you always going to go to church. Now, it's just how you feel. You backslid. Because at one time, the church of God was, was just the place to be. But now, it's based on how you feel. You backslid. And at one point, if you used to always love people, you used to love people, be happy all the time. And, you know, you know, no matter what, ain't going to let stuff get to me. I got a good attitude. I'm saved, blah, blah, blah. And you off that, you backslidden. And, you know, but the way you avoid backsliding is you maintain a fervent relationship with the Lord and you repent because you got to come back to your first love. Right. So, you know, but uh, turning away means that I literally lead the faith. There's people that the Bible said in the last days, some people are going to depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils. When you turn away, you gave heed to a seducing spirit and a doctrine of the devil. It's people that used to be preachers in a deep and, and they, but now they preach that everybody's going to heaven, no matter what. Everybody will be saved. You know, that's kind of interesting. But like I said, God has mercy and who has mercy, compassion and has compassion. I'm not telling you this so you can go and examine somebody else's life. I'm telling you so you can have the fear of the Lord and not be one of those people who have, who have escaped the, who have escaped the pollutions of the world. And then once again, you become overcome by, you know, overcome and entangled again. I mean, if you've been saved 10 years and you has not cursed and now you're back cursing, you're not even talking about fighting, all that stuff, you backslidden. You're being overcome. You're allowing those things to subdue you. You're allowing those things to prevail against you. You're not overcoming evil with good. You're letting evil prevail. So you got to be mindful. That's a prophetic warning and that's an admonition to us because a lot of us, we backslide very easily. You know, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. But that's the thing. You know, it just depends because the thing about that, it depends on what the Lord says, you know, what you're talking about, John, it depends on what the Lord said, depends on what the Lord says, so I'm just, I ain't gonna touch that, it just depends on what the Lord says, because God don't judge every man the same, God judges you according to your revelation, so, you know, I'm, I'm have a different judgment than a lot of y'all, because it's stuff that I know that you, unless I say it, you may never know, but I'm going to be judged according to what I know, so God judges you according to what you know, not according to he judges when you get exposed to something, you're held accountable. When you see the light, you got to walk in it, right? 
I watch this. Um, let's keep going, you guys. I'll show you something else. Watch this. Uh, we're gonna go to we're going with Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation. Revelation actually has the most mentions of overcoming. Revelation. There's more things about overcoming in Revelation than anything. And it's very deep because, you know, we are in those times of those seals breaking, right? Those seals breaking, right? When the time, oh man, why I close this? Cordell, open, go to overcome for me, please. Jesus, why I do that? I don't even know where I'm at now. Well, now I can look it up on my phone. Never mind. I don't need that. That book kind of heavy. On my lap. Jesus. And it's hot. How does it do this? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um. That's not all of them. Yeah, it depends. The thing about the YouTube is sometimes when I do certain videos, they don't get uploaded. It's like weird. Like the law of confession, the law of relationships, for some odd reason, it will not upload. Every video I have, it won't upload. So it's it kind of irritating, but just go with the floor. I, I, I don't really, sometimes I be thinking about having to do it all over. I'm like, man, I don't want to do all that over. But um, it's on Catch. If, you, if it's not on YouTube, you always go on Catch and watch it. Even if you ever wanted to see the prophetic words I gave you or something, all that stuff should be on Catch. But it's on catch. Now I deleted some of them. I should. I wish I hadn't done it, but I, I had not done it. But it's on YouTube. I deleted a lot of those um, videos. K A T C H. Man, I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, go to overcome that because it's not all on here. You already got. You gave it to me. Yeah, go overcome for me. Look up. You know, look it up. So, um, so there's one thing about the Antichrist. I mean, I, I can address some things, y'all. Jesus, this is interesting. Is this helping anybody? Because I can talk about some stuff. It's so much stuff people don't know. And now I understand why why God, I have such a passion for knowledge and understanding and stuff. Man, it's so much stuff people just don't know. God of heaven. I want to talk about the Antichrist. I want to show you some stuff, you know. Because um, Jesus is stuff I can talk about. But it's some stuff you guys just... You wouldn't be able to handle. So I know how some people's minds are. Some people's, uh, you know, I may just let that slide. All right, let's see. Uh, K A T C H. Yeah, that's it, um, Tony. All right, so watch. Um, let me show you something. Some more things about overcoming, all right? Oh, that's why. Okay, okay, I, I get it, I get it. All right, that's why. All right, let me see. Um, it's revelation, not is revelation, not revelations. It's the revelation of uh, Jesus Christ to his servants. That's the that's title of the book. The revelation of Jesus Christ to his servants. All right. Um, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Y'all following me so far? Is helping you? Eyes, anybody eyes being open? Cordelia, let me show what's up with y'all. Yep. All right. First John chapter five. First John chapter five. Watch this. Um, Okay, watch this. We're going to, uh, verse 1. It says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So nobody can be born of God unless they believe Jesus Christ is, Jesus is the Christ. So a lot of people say they, they, you know, they love God, but, you know, Jesus is the way. You can, you know, anybody trying to, you know, find God without Jesus is a blind man on the walk, you know. And a blind man on the walk will never get his destination because he don't know where he's going. He needs help. So Jesus opens your eyes so you can see. So when people just always talk about God and don't talk about Jesus, be aware of that. There are a lot of people that minister that never mention the name Jesus. You got to be aware. 
It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's eye opening if you can minister and never say the name of Jesus. It's interesting. I also believe that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone that loveth Him, that be that He be, that begotteth, love of Him also that is begotten of Him. So look, if you love God, that means you're gonna love Jesus. So it's amazing how many people say they love God but hate Jesus. And that's a deception, because you cannot love, you cannot love God and and hate His Son. That's interesting. By this we know the children of that we know. The, this we know that we love children of God, and we love God, and we keep His commandments. So this is how we know that we love other believers. The way I know we love other believers, if you love God and keep His commandments. If you don't love God and keep His commandments, you don't love other people. That's listen. To if you don't if you don't love God and keep His commandments, you can't love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Watch this. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. grievous. So this is how you demonstrate you love God. No man can ever say they love God without keeping his commandments. And think about his commandments. There's a deception that his commandments are grievous. His commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not burdensome. But if you love God, you're going to do what he says. You're going to do what he commands you to do. Any man that loves God, they keep what he's commanded them to do. And anything God commands you to do, it will never be grievous. Watch this. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. So watch this. Just because you're born of God, anybody is born of God, they overcome the world. Watch this. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that love of Jesus, but he that believes Jesus, Son of God? Who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes Jesus, Son of God? So you start off at a place of overcoming. You start off at a place of transcendence. You already you already have a transcendent quality about you. Because the Holy Spirit, you have God indwelling you. And because God's indwelling you, there's nothing the world can put in your way. There's nothing the world can come against you with. There's nothing the world can do to you that you can't overcome. You already has overcome the world. And you already have the victory just because you're in the faith. But here's the thing. You can't just know this. You got to walk it out. You got to demonstrate this on a daily basis. When somebody hurts your feelings, when somebody offends you, when somebody says something you don't like, when you get in arguments, you have to demonstrate that you are really who you say you are. You got to demonstrate you love God, how you respond to rejection. You got to demonstrate you love God, how you respond to, you know, adverse. You got to demonstrate you love God, how you respond to misunderstandings. You got to demonstrate you love God in everything you do. Because you will have to overcome the world and you'll never overcome the world without faith. Your faith in God makes you victorious. The, the, the more you develop your faith, the more victory you'll see in everyday life. Some of us lack victory because we have not learned how to utilize and use our faith. So until you learn how to utilize, put your faith to work, and use your faith, you'll never be victorious. you got to learn how to be victorious in situations and dealing with people as well. I'm not just talking about quoting the Bible. I'm not just talking about going to church. I'm talking about when you're at work and somebody curses you out, right? I'm talking about when somebody says something that offends your mind. I'm talking about when somebody does something you did not agree with. I'm talking about when somebody is falsely accusing you. I'm talking about when somebody lies on you, slanders you. I'm talking about when somebody betrays you. I'm talking about when somebody wounds you. Those are the times you have to demonstrate a victory, right? You got to have keep the faith and demonstrate that I'm better than this. This situation will not, I'm not going to be downtrodden. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be downtrodden. I'm not going to um, crawl into a rock and hide myself, isolate myself from everybody. I'm not going to run to the caves and want, run to the mountains and, and jump off to commit suicide. I'm not, I'm not going to entertain this. Listen, man, I'm bigger than this. There's a way out of this. And divine strategy will cause, will give me victory, right? That's how you got to think. Watch this. And I'm going to show you why. Now, the next, the next couple of verses, they may shake you up. They may shake you up now. They may shake you up. Go to um, go to Revelation two. Revelation two, Revelation two. How long have I been doing this for? Are y'all able to see the time? Can anybody see how long I've been doing this for? I only I've been I've been doing this for a long time, huh? I started about eight o'clock then. Jesus, how? Anybody? All right, uh. All right, Revelation 2. Okay, almost two hours. Right, Revelation 2, we're going to start with verse... I'm going to try to make that fall. All right, Revelation 2, we're going to start with verse 7. Now we'll do verse 1. 
It says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesians write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor. Right? The thing about the church's revelation, the, ch the seven churches of revelation have to do with the seven different um, types of churches that, we're gonna, that you're going to see in the last days. And these seven churches are representative of each church that exists. You're going to find... I ain't going to touch that. Watch this. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and found them liars. There's one thing about me. You know, and when I examine myself, this is me. When I examine myself, you got to find yourself in this. You got to find yourself. You know, I, I made Cordell, Misha, and my ex-girlfriend, we all went through it and we had to find which one we were. The reason I knew which one I was because God told me. And I want you to see how, I want you to get this, because God, I will be in prayer, and God will say, return to your first love. And I'm like, man, I'm doing all this, what you talking about? But let me tell you why, because I want you to get this. If you go through Revelation 2 and 3, you're going to find yourself, and you're going to have to repent. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why this applies to me. This is my warfare. Let me tell you why. And I'm going to be vulnerable. I, I don't care what you think, for real. I'm going to be vulnerable and tell you why. Watch this. He said, look, I know, because this is me. If you say you're an apostle or prophet, I test ministries. And if you're not an apostle, I know. Watch this. So you try them with say the apostles and are not found in the Watch this. And I born and I have patience and I labored for his name, have not fainted. I've been doing this since I was 18 and still laboring. I'm, I'm going to be 25 next week on Wednesday. Watch this. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Watch this. That thou hast left thy first love. Let me tell you what this means. This means that I allow stuff to affect me. And I was not doing it with the same love and passion I was doing it for. I let people get to me. I let people hurt me. I let people wound me. I let people betray me. And I allowed what they did to me to kill my zeal and my passion for God. I allow people around me who lack passion, who lack zeal, who don't want to do what they need to do. I allow that to affect me. And it killed my first love. And I did not relate to God in the same way. Even though I was still doing stuff, it wasn't with the same heart. And, and I'm in myself, you know, there are times where in prayer, God's speaking about certain things, but I know this is my warfare. So you got to know yourself. So I know that my warfare is to, and are you doing this, Darnell, when, when you got, when you had a dream about hell and you got saved, man, you got 30, you got almost 30 people saved. Where's that fire? Darnell, man, there was a time you were so passionate about teaching, but now it's like a duty. Where's the fire? Darnell, there was a time where you would pray four hours a day, nonstop. For our, without tongues, where's the fire? You know, and, and that's what I, I fight with. That's my warfare. Watch this. It say, remember, therefore, when thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Watch this. Or else I will come quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, so thou repent. Now, it's scary. If you don't repent, he'll take your candlestick. What does that mean? That means that you will no longer represent the Lord, and that means that you're no longer a church. That's not that scary, because a lot of people don't talk about stuff like that. They tell you no matter what you do, no, no, no. He said these seven candlesticks are the seven churches. Now, this is a church. It ain't just a person. This is, this is a type of church. There's, a, there's people right now doing stuff in the name of the Lord, but they're wounded, they're hurt, and they're not relating to people the right way. There are people right now doing stuff in the name of the Lord. You look at them, you can never tell that what's going on, but in their heart, something is different. And only those who knew them at the beginning can tell because they, they remember the passion, the fight. And I, now, here's the thing about me. I have an uncommon passion. So people think I'm passionate because they still hear me listening to videos and stuff like that. And my, I, now I, I got an unusual passion for God, but I'm a lot more passionate than I, I exhibit it now. A lot more passionate. And watch this. It says, and but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now that I can get into that, what that means, etc. And that's something true about myself, that I hate the deed and the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. Watch this. He that hath an ear, let him hear the Spirit say unto the church. Churches, watch this. To him that overcomes... Will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God? So the only people that's going to eat of the tree of life are those that overcome. If you don't be victorious, if you don't prevail, if you don't subdue, and if you don't conquer, you will not eat from the tree of life. And some of us don't even have in our minds that we're more than a conqueror. If you don't think you're more than a conqueror, you'll never overcome, right? Let me show you something else. Um, show you something else about this overcoming thing. Like I said, a lot of people are not preparing themselves for where we are in time. You have to learn how to overcome, right? So I said, um, go to Revelation 3. Let me show you another promise about overcoming. These are some of the promises about overcoming. If I overcome, baby, I'm going to eat from the tree of life. 
Who wants to eat from the tree of life? Who want you want to eat from the tree of life, Cordell? All right. Do y'all want to eat from the tree of life? This so I, I'm, I'm gonna show you this. Now this right here is very interesting. <laughs> oh my God! Now some of you, I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of you are gonna be this one right here. But now some of you are gonna be lukewarm. Some of you are gonna be this. This is the warfare. This, watch this. To the um, I like this. The angel of the church, the Sardis, right? These things said he that have seven spirits of God and the seven churches. Watch this. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, thou art alive and are dead. Now this is deep. This is a people. You can look at their works and they have a reputation that they're on fire for God, but they're dead. They remind you of anybody or somebody about to laugh in the room. Watch this. So they have a reputation that everybody, but oh man, I the super shade. <laughs> Hey, I, I throw shade. Oh man, you can get a prayer through. Oh man, you oh, so <laughs> 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 It's hurt. <laughs> he said, he said, daddy called. He's like, you get a prayer through. <laughs> I look, right? Look, look, look. So look, you have a you look, you have a name that you're alive and you're dead. Watch this. So you people on the outside, oh man, you're such a great Christian. Oh, you're on fire for God. Oh my God, all stuff you can do. They think so, right? But you really did. Now watch this. So he said, look, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain. You need to strengthen some stuff because it's weak. Watch this. And it, the stuff that needs to be strengthened is ready to die. It's on the cusp, on the verge of dying. Watch this. For I have not found thy works perfect before thy God, which means God is not pleased with the way I carry myself. God's not pleased with the way I'm living. My works are not mature before God. So be watchful. Pay attention to how you're living and strengthen it. And then, because if you don't strengthen it, it's going to die. Watch this. It says, I not find words perfect for God. Watch this. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast. So you got to remember what you've been exposed to. You've been exposed to higher truth. You should be doing better than you're doing. Remember what you heard and what you received and hold fast to it. Don't let it go and repent. Watch this. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come upon thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. There are a lot of believers right now. They're not watchful. They're not strengthening things that remain. And watch this. What will happen to those people? The day of the Lord will come to them like a thief. They are not going to be prepared for the Lord's return at all. And that's going to be scary because he gonna, he's going to purposely come upon those people like a thief. He's going to, you know, think about a thief. A thief studies you. Think about this. Right now, I can go outside and God forbid somebody could be sitting in a car looking out. And they're sitting there observing my tennis. Okay, he leaves at this time. Blah, blah, blah. He comes back this time. And they study me. And then they're gonna come at the best time when I'm not ready. So if you're those, if you're that, if you're that kind of person, then that day gonna be like a thief in the night for you. And that's a scary thing. It's gonna be like a thief in the night. And he's gonna come when you're not expecting. Watch this. It says, Thou even has a few names, even in Sardis, which will not defile their garments. For they, they should walk me if they're worthy. So you gotta make sure you don't defile your garments. Don't be defiled by sin. Don't be defiled by the world. Because if you don't, if you don't, if you're defiled by the world, you won't walk with Jesus. He said, going to walk me in white for their word. Watch this. He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So the only people that's going to be clothed in white raiment are those that overcome. Watch this. And I will not blot out his name out of the book. Now, this is a scary thing. See, a lot of people don't teach this. They don't tell you that your name can be blotted out of the book of life. They tell us your name never ever. No, no, no. This says, if you don't overcome, now this thing about it, you, you were saved. But if you don't overcome, he will blot your name out of the book of life. This is what the Bible says. Now, Darnell, verse 5. He that overcomes, he's going to be clothed in white raiment. Watch this. I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father for the angels. Watch this. So if I overcome, Jesus is going to be so proud to be related to me that he's going to say, he's mine. That's my brother. That's my brother. That's my brother in Christ. That's what he's going to say. He's my elder brother. That's my brother. Watch this. But if I do not overcome, he's not going to know me. And my name will be blotted out. And there are a lot of people don't know that. So they're living as if no matter what they do. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My name, no, no, no. Baby, if you ain't living right, your name blotted out. That's scary. If you don't overcome, if you don't learn how to overcome, if you keep letting everything weigh you down, if you keep being subdued by stuff, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna walk worthy. You ain't why why would Jesus want to relate to somebody that didn't demonstrate Christ is in them the hope of glory? Right? Now watch this now. I'm gonna show you some more. Is helping anybody? Who all on here? <laughs> I said, I mean, I can tell you some stuff now. 
I remember we was on a fast. Y'all remember we was on a fast? We read like 10 chapters of Revelation. Mm -hmm. How everybody was. <laughs> then we was on a fast. And I, I, I was going to read the whole book of Revelation. Like I said, man, I, I could do it. If I did a teaching of Revelation, man, everybody be, little, everybody be living holy. <laughs> if I brought Revelation down chapter by chapter, oh my God. It's about the holiness. Oh my God. The holiness. Some, man, are you serious? If I, if I brought down a revelation, the holiness, what? The holiness. Overcoming looks like Jesus. Jesus is the picture of overcoming. She said, what does overcoming look like? Overcome. And the other thing about studying Devante, make sure that God is giving the revelation. Because the thing about revelation, to understand that you need a revelation, you will never understand revelation without a revelation. It's called the revelation. For you to understand that book, God has to reveal it to you. You can't just put two and two together. It, God literally has to open it up for you. Because if not, you'll be in error. So I'm just, I'm just saying that. So nothing's wrong with that, you know, et cetera. But make sure it's the, because it's the whole book is called the revelation of Jesus Christ to his servants. That book is a revelation. So if you don't have a revelation, you're going to be off when you talk about it. So, you know, I can always, you know, people always come up with stuff to say, well, this means the woman is this, the blah, 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 blah. The woman is the church. That's interesting. How is the woman the church? She gave birth to Jesus. Salah. And I, I, I can tantalize you with that. How is the woman, the church, if she gave birth to Jesus? So the church gives birth to Jesus. And I'll, I'll sit that there just to make you think. So watch this. So watch this. Um, verse 12. Watch this. He that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Watch this. So if you overcome, God going to make you a pillar, a staple in the temple of my God. He shall go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write up under my new name. So if I overcome, I'm going to be a pillar in the house of God. And I'm, I'm going to have a place in the house of God. He's going to write God's name upon me. And then he's going to write the New Jerusalem upon me. And he's going to write upon him, me, his new name. That's the reward of overcoming. See, a lot of times the reading is so hard for you. Baby, you don't got no expectation. Without vision, people prepare. This is what causes me not to snap. This is why I won't, this is why I won't, you know, I won't kill nobody. Because think about this. You know, one thing about having a lot of passion, you know, Moses was an example. I remember Apostle Chris said this. He said God told him that if he wouldn't do what he's doing, he'll be a murderer. And I, I think I would too because of how passionate that I am. And when you get so passionate, man, you be wanting, you be wanting stuff done. And your passion can get so strong, you can try to be God. And I, I can see that. So you have to be aware of certain things like that. But this is, this is what keeps my sanity. Knowing that I can stand in that place, knowing that I can eat from the tree, like this is why I won't give up. This is why, you know, this is why I, I'll take a bullet to the head for Jesus. You know, this is why I'll never deny my faith because I'm looking forward to something. I have vision, and we need vision. You need to look. You need to have something to look forward to. Why are you going through this stuff and discouraged when you get the rewards? Of, man, everything you're going through, you should be trying to overcome. Am I right about it? So you can you can partake of the benefits. So you can be worthy. You want to be found worthy. He said, he that overcomes, he's worthy to walk with me. Don't you want to be worthy to walk with Jesus? Some of us think we're walking with Jesus, but we ain't overcoming it. How are you walking with Jesus and, and you're always victimized? Man, how are you walking with Jesus and you always hurt? you always licking wounds. How are you walking with That's what Jesus looks like? You're telling, you telling the world, that's what Jesus, that, that's what it's like to be saved. Always depressed. Always depressed. Always lonely. Always hurt. Closed up. That, that, that's what it's like. Stuff don't look right and it's going to show. Man, please. Think about this. Watch this. We're going to keep going. I'm going to so I got one more place to go and we're going to stop. Uh, we're going to go down to verse 21. Watch this. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I overcame and I'm set with him, set down with my father in the stone. So watch this. If you overcome, he going to grant you the right to sit with him on his throne just as he overcame watch this and he sat down to follow his throne so if i if i overcome then i'm gonna sit with jesus on his throne that's deep this is the last one and this is gonna scare a lot of people uh revelation 21 revelation 21 it's gonna scare a lot of people but it is what it is you need to have to fear the lord right this is scary <laughs> god of heaven because the Bible said creation is groaning, right, for the manifestations of the sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God. So let me tell you this. Revelation chapter 21. Y'all with me? Verse 7. Watch this. 
He that overcomes shall inherit all things. Watch this. So if you don't overcome, you will not have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It is, it is unrighteous for you to not overcome. If you're not overcoming, it's sin. Sin is to not overcome. It is unrighteous to be up against stuff and not prevail and conquer and demonstrate some level of victory. That's sin. Watch this. So he that overcomes shall inherit all things. If you don't overcome, you forfeit your inheritance. Watch this. It says, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. So you'll be called a son of God if you overcome. You're not worthy to be called a son of God if you don't overcome. You got to overcome. Now, let me show you how to prove that. Verse 8, watch this. But the, the, all, this is a list of people that don't overcome. But the fearful, if you're fearful, you're not overcoming. Unbelieving, if you can't believe God, you're not overcoming. Abominable, you're doing stuff that's just an abomination. You won't, you won't overcome. If you're a murderer, you, you, won't, you have not overcome. If you're a whoremonger, you can't control your body, you have no one overcome. If you're a sorcerer, you can't overcome. If you're an idolater, if you have idolatry in your life, you're not overcome. If you're a liar, you're not overcome. Watch this. And they shall all have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So everybody that does not overcome, they're going to experience the second death. The second, there's a first death. The first death is to be separated from the body. But the second death is to be separated from God eternally. So here's the thing. If you don't overcome, you will be hurt by the second death. This is how deep this stuff is. You, can, you're so, you will be put in the lake of fire for not overcoming. That's how deep that is. But we don't hear this stuff. We talk, everything is good. Everything's all right. Let's praise the Lord. I mean, I, I've been saying something. It'll be offensive, but you know how I've been saying it. <laughs> I can't say it on camera. Jesus, I was going to say it. You know, no, watch replay. Look, you know, the, uh, the, the I ain't going to say it, but I was going to, yeah, I was going to poke fun and stuff. You know, the, uh, you should to tell me. I ain't even finished the sentence. But yeah, you got to be really mindful. It start with, it start with, uh, Start with a J, end with a Y. Huh? It's real short. J, end with a Y, real short. Oh, my God, forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. So, oh, you see some more. Hey, look, girl out the guy. She just... Anyway, but I'm saying, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that you have to get to a place where you literally, you literally overcome because your salvation depends on it. But the thing about it is that God is not asking you to do something you can't do. The Holy Spirit empowers you to overcome. Jesus indwelling in you empowers you to overcome. You have to craft and develop enough relationship with the Lord so that when trials, circumstances, situations, stuff um, presents itself, you demonstrate mastery and you demonstrate the ability to be victorious. The only reason you won't overcome is because you did not develop the level of relationship with God you needed for your purpose and destiny. That's the only reason you won't overcome. But if you carve out enough relationship with God and if you love God enough, you'll always overcome. If you love God enough to keep his commandments and if you love God enough to spend time in his presence on a consistent basis in the word and in prayer, then you'll develop the strength and you'll develop enough history with God for Jesus to be expressed through you. But everything you're up against is designed to, to cause you to forget that you overcome because greater is, any, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So it's untapped potential for greatness, victory, and mastery within you. And you have to tap into that potential by spending time with God. You'll never reach your full potential unless you develop a strong relationship with God. The Bible says Psalm 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Some people, they only re will reach 30% of their potential. Some people, they'll only reach 60%. A few people will go on reach 100. The only people that are going to reach 100%, they will press in toward the mark of the prize of the high calling Christ Jesus. You got to be pressing toward the mark to be all God calls you to be. If you lack passion, you're not pressing toward the mark. If you lack passion, you're deceived, you're complacent, and you've forgotten that you were cleansed from your former sins. But you got to be passionate. You got to really spend time with God. You got to really have the word in you. You got to really be meditating on the word because meditation will increase your willpower to resist. You got to be meditating on the word. You got to be thinking about the word. You got to be speaking about the word. You got to be spending time with the Lord and all of that over a process of time, thinking about the word, speaking about the word, 
spending time in prayer, praying in the Holy Spirit, all those things will develop you the strength and the ability to overcome. So I want to encourage you guys tonight to purpose to overcome because too much depends on you overcoming not to. So look, I'm going to stop here. Look, if you don't follow me on Periscope, follow me on Periscope, Darnell Craig. Hey, if you have not shared the video, share the video with your followers, please. This is a must here for people. Also, look, if those who want to sow, you know, um, those who want to sow, um, those who want to sow, you want to sow toward the ministry, you want to be a blessing, you feel like the message blessed your life, you feel led to sow, you want to support the vision, or you just want to uh, support the vision, or you just want to be a blessing to me, or become a partner, you go on PayPal.com, Darnell Craig, you can sow, and um, if you give, when you give money, give it as friends and family, not as goods and services, friends and family, and you can sow, and um, um, for those who want to order the CD series, Hearing the Voice of God, um, hearing the voice of God, I, it's, it's available for purchase. Three cities set about four hours of teaching on hearing the voice of God. You can get that for thirty dollars. Go on PayPal.com. Say this is for the CD. Um, this is for the CD. Um, hearing God's voice. Put the note. This is for the CD. And then email me all caps t o a u m at yahoo.com t o a u m at yahoo.com. And then send me um, your shipping address on the email, and we'll ship it out. Faith, I'm waiting on you to respond back to the email. So I can know um, what's up, you know, what's your shipping address? They were at the post office. I sent people there. Misha Cordell was sent there. And the address you gave was wrong. Uh, it wasn't clear or whatever. So resend that so I can send it out to you. Um, Jameson and um, and Jonna, your CD was sent this morning. Um, Ch 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 um, Choma has it. She says it's a great and powerful CD. I'm glad it's blessing her. Tashina and Jeremy have it. Shay has it. Um, it's some more people that have it as well. Um, it's, it's too many to remember off the top of the head. But so it really, really bless your life, really, really encourage you to get that if you want to learn to hear God's voice in everyday life. But I want to encourage you guys, we got to overcome, we got to demonstrate some level of victory, and we can't always be victims, we can't always be so victimized by life. We got to overcome, we got to overcome. It's too much, it's too much depending on you overcoming for you to be weak in faith and not do what you need to do. So I want to encourage you guys, like I said, those who want to give, you want to sow, you want to become, you want to become partners, you want to just be a blessing. Really, really, um, you know, you can sow there and then all will be well. I appreciate you guys and I pray it helped you guys and um, I pray it helped you guys open your eyes. Okay, everybody, I may be back on here. We'll see. So, uh, all right, y'all, uh, just be on the lookout. I may be right back on here. All right, thank you, Tony. Okay, y'all, bye-bye. One second.